So use whatever you have. Do not think too much about, do not punish yourself. When you do something wrong, you're, you're learning from it. You're just learning. And the next day you know what you do. So do not punish yourself for that. That's right. You're always learning. And you're always learning from mistakes. That was a small clip from today's episode with Masi Dawari, who is an architect from Iran and also a co-founder of a startup called InnoBrain. This is going to be a very inspiring episode because Masi shares his journey in architecture, studying in University of Tehran as well as the University of Isfahan in Iran, moving to Sweden, working with his brother on a startup called InnoBrain, which is a neurotech company offering innovative brain-computer interface applications. So how cool is that for an architect to get into the neuroscience space and also into the startup world? There's a lot of good stuff in this episode. Masi is going to be sharing his challenges, his struggles, and we're going to be discussing about startups in detail, which is quite fascinating to say the least. And for me personally, this episode was quite inspiring by what Masi had to share. For more on the episode, like podcast links, show notes, and more, head to arkyan.com slash 40. There's also some exciting stuff which I do share towards the end of the episode, so please do stick around. With that said, let's head to the episode with Masi Tawari. Let's go. You're about to enter the Ak Young Podcast. The Young Podcast. India's first and very own architecture podcast, where you'll hear the insights, experiences, and journeys from India's leading architects. No matter what your skill level is, together, we'll build on our knowledge and share architecture's greatest stories ever told. Now, here's your host, Manish Paul Simon. All right. So before we jump uh, to the various tangents in this episode, uh, give us a brief on how you got into architecture and what is it like studying in architecture school? Well, how I got into architecture, it's really interesting thing that I didn't have any clue what is architecture at first before I started my bachelor hmm. uh, about uh, eight years ago. And the fact is that my cousin cousin was a student of architecture and when I wanted to go to university I was really skeptical uh, to uh, choose something uh, this field of study and uh, she just took me me there in the university and on a, when I was in the studios and I was watching different models 3D models or uh, uh, the, the the projects that the students have done nice. have done I was really fascinated that wow it is interesting and then I chose architecture and then I fell in love with architecture actually so they had like parametric models back then itself uh, parametric mm, no it was more like um, artistic models and conceptual models and uh, because I'm a really I'm, I'm also have a really artistic part in, in myself and uh, sometimes I do some something some sort of sculptures and uh, some some very tiny tiny stuff and uh, those are actually conceptual models and I was really fascinated wow it is not boring I mean the architecture and it is a uh, something it is an interesting interesting and adventuristic uh, major so yes then then I went to architecture all right and uh, did you feel the same when you joined uh, you joined art university of isfahan right uh well yes it was it was really good actually but uh, still i can say that uh, the first year or two uh uh the first one or two year and it was much more inter- interesting because after that it became like more of engineering which i really like that mm. but uh, the education educational system it's it's i wasn't really uh, agree with that but mm. at all i can say that i was really happy to be there because we had also a good community there with my cl- classmates classmates and we we used to go around the country to see different cities old traditional cities and uh, to attending to different workshops and we learned a lot so so i can say at all uh, that i really loved the, the era that i was in art university of uh, isfahan Nice. And uh, this was like a four year course, right? Uh, it was, uh, you can finish in four years, but I, but I finished in five years because the last year, uh, last, the last year, uh, the fifth year I was working and I was also working on my thesis. So, uh, yes, that is why for me, for me, it was five year. All right. And then, uh, you 
Why did you decide to take up masters in architecture? Was it is it like a general norm where everyone does masters in Iran? Well, uh, in Iran, yes, it, it is. It is a good thing that you have a high degree, which I don't really agree upon that. Mm-hmm. On that, and it's really good that you have a master degree and a PhD and whatever. But the fact that I went to the master was uh, that I really want really wanted to go to the capital because at that time I was living in a city. It was also one of the biggest city in uh, Iran. So I did my bachelor in, yes, in Art University of Isfahan. And then I wanted to go to the best university of the country, which was in the capital, uh, uh, which is Tehran. So I could get in and uh, I was also in my fifth year. I was working on my thesis. I was uh, a little bit working and also studying for the the master exam because we have exam uh, we have oh, to take right. exam for okay. going to the master degree so i could get in yes i could get in to one of the best universities and yes that was my first master degree actually actually in architecture awesome and then you uh, prolonged your academic career for even further right yes because the uh, i had also this ambition that i really wanted to see how is it working in other country as a student of architecture, how they teach uh, students of architecture, because I was also really, really uh, interested to YouTube. So I was al- always watching different videos from student of architecture around the world. So mm-hmm. I was like, I really want to go there and see. So the next level after going to the, going to the capital and the best university of uh, my country was to going abroad and see the best university outside of the, my, my country. Yeah. All right. And uh, this led you to the path to uh, Sweden and uh, now you're doing something awesome, which is uh, you're uh, part of InnoBrain and you also joined another university as a startup program, right? So briefly, uh, could you tell us about that? Yeah, in, in briefly, I, I can tell you that uh, my first master degree, uh, my thesis was in, in an area that uh, it was this was the start as a start idea for the first startup program that we went through which was in KTH University uh, in uh, Stockholm Sweden hmm. Sweden which was my brother was there was studying as a PhD so I was in Iran so I had a good idea for my thesis first master degree thesis so we started a company there and, and I was I was in Iran and now it's been uh, about nine months that I came for my second master degree here in Sweden. I'm in another city of Sweden and I came to their startup startup prog- program in my university, which is Lund University. Mm. And I started in another idea, which uh, is more related to design and architecture. You're part of Lund University and you're also doing this uh, uh, the startup. So w- what were you exactly uh, researching or studying in uh, Lund University? Uh huh. So, because my first first master degree was more into uh, advanced architecture and designing, and the specialty was in residential design, the first master degree. So, for the second master degree, I was really interested into uh, the, the more of the technology of architecture and what we know it as a parametric architecture or digital architecture or something like that. So, I chose a new specialty, which is. Uh, spatial experiment, hmm. which you work a lot with the rhino and grasshopper and mimicking the nature and natural patterns and, and uh, then using a lot of 3D printing and CNC milling and all this stuff. So the second master degree is about the more of the technology of architecture and the digital architecture. And well, the, 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 the subject that I... Uh, came up with hmm. for a startup program to come to the startup program was not actually exactly related to the digital architecture uh, and it is uh, a little bit different actually okay cool all right so uh, could you briefly tell us about how you made this transition into uh, neuroscience as an architect uh, i don't know how that happens but uh, yeah pr- probably since your brother is also a founder but uh, how difficult or how different was the transition well, uh, it is it is really difficult because uh, when you are studying architecture, uh, it is more about the designing and engineering and all this stuff. But when it comes to go to another uh, field of area and field of study and combine that to your uh, knowledge, current knowledge, it is not easy. So I came up with the idea with the help of my uh, um, teacher back then in my first master degree in Iran, mm. we came up with the idea that we can combine architecture with neuroscience, which neuroscience is the science of brain, actually, in brief. Mm-hmm. 
So it's a science that is, is, is studying the brain and everything that happens in your brain. So, uh, and it is actually that there are people and there are some academies that they are working on the neuroscience and architecture, which they call it neuroarchitecture, and mostly in California. And so I had to study about the neuroscience to see what is it. So I was um, I was actually studying some materials from um, the the, uh, the psychiatrist. I I. I I had some materials from a psychiatrist. Mm. Uh, I went to some psychiatrists and the people who are working with something related to the brain and they gave me some materials and uh, documents and I uh, read them so that I can have, a, I mean, a, just the structure about neuroscience, understand what is it. And then I tried to combine it with my study. All right. And uh, how much of overlap is there between uh, architecture and neuroscience? I, I don't think there is much, but uh, maybe from your perspective. Well, the fact is that um, nowadays, one of the best things to do uh, to pursuing your education uh, that I believe is that that you can go through multidisciplinary multidisciplinary mm. areas. Yeah, absolutely. So I was trying to make a multidisciplinary project and uh, right, because right now we had a lot of progress in each field of a study. And now I believe that maybe it is time to make them more multidisciplinary. And when you see a very, very successful companies and businesses, sometimes they are actually doing a multidisciplinary uh, business. So they are mm. using another knowledge and combining to another knowledge, and they are producing a new, a new product. So yes, that was that was it. Yeah, I think even like if you want to grow uh, these days, you need to venture out into different other fields as well, right? Yes, yes. And for me, that I came up with the idea just to go through the neuro architecture. Before coming up with this idea, I was about to working on ergonomic, ergonomic and architecture, which ergonomic was more like a subject in industrial design, which I was also interested. So I wanted to combine that ergonomic into interior design and make something out of it. But then we changed it, changed it to neuroscience because it was much more, uh, you know, it was uh, more progressive and something more futuristic and uh, I really liked to do that that so so then we change it to the neuroscience and architecture yeah all right and uh, what are the different products that InnoBrain produces that helps uh, in this field so let me give you a brief about InnoBrain and what we we, we are doing uh, in yeah, InnoBrain sure. so uh, my master thesis was uh, neuroarchitecture and neuroscience so I was about to to show people different kind of design that I have designed and model and rendered and whatever. And they were, were watching my design, different kind of design while I am putting a device on their head to record their brain signal. Oh, wow. So after they are watching and I'm recording their signal without the, they are saying, without they saying anything, saying anything, I can understand after analyzing the signals, I could understand that how they're feeling, uh, what is their, how is their, um, how much is their engagement and their excite, excitement about those designs. And then I would give them a questionnaire and uh, they will give me the answers just orally. And then I, comp I, I compare the record records and signal records to the questioners to find mm -hmm. out if they were uh, true or not. And they were mostly right. They, they were correct mostly. Mm -hmm. So we started the inner brain with the idea that that we can uh, evaluate uh, different products by um, uh, giving those products to people, to customer, and then capture the their brain signal and then and then analyze their brain signal to mm -hmm. understand how they feel and it is mostly effective and good when you want want to do those experiments on kind of those kind of customers that they cannot express their feelings just like um, um, uh, autistic autistic people people or a uh, child that they cannot mm -hmm. maybe express really, uh, you know, really easily about their feelings or old people or the people cannot, who cannot talk or talk or express uh, any kind. Um, so this was the idea that we started the inner brain with. So at first we were in different industries. So we were um, um, making, we were actually making uh, experiments on pilot studies, mm -hmm. for example, in 
uh, car industry. So we wanted to understand which car, for example, one car from Toyota and one car one car from Peugeot. Uh, we were just putting someone as a driver and then put the uh, device on the on, on the that person's head to understand how they feel when they are driving with these these two cars. Or we did also did uh, another pilot test and pilot study with the food industry. So we had two kind of two brand of juice, mm. uh, orange juice. We were giving them the, to people to drink them, and then we were just capturing their signal to understand how they feel and something like that. But right now we just narrow it down to the medical industry mm -hmm. and to the medical devices because it is much more important right now, and uh, it's really it can be really efficient and good. Wow, sounds super interesting. I think uh, this would be beneficial to a lot of uh, architects and like to find out the psyche of a user when he's standing in a space with uh, maybe different colors or a different scale, right? Exactly, exactly. Exactly, exactly. For Because for me, for my project, my master thesis, uh, I was working only on the form and the shape. Uh, hmm. Uh, and so I, I had to eliminate every color and I had to make it just one color, one or two color. And uh, I was mostly working on the rectangular shape, mm -hmm. rectangular, rectangular design and all and in compare to uh, the curve design. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to see how people uh, feel uh, through these uh, kind of design designs. Yeah. So uh, what did you find out? Do people prefer the concrete boxes or more fluidic uh, Sahadi type well, designs? Well, yeah, well, they, they were different. And actually, and it's really interesting, some of them uh, that they also, it's really interesting that some of them that they are so logical, they were so logical in their own life mm -hmm. and uh, the artistic part of their their personality was less. They liked more rectangular designs, so they wanted they liked these rigidness, you know. And mm -hmm. the others, others that they had some more artistic personality in them and um, less of logic. Mm -hmm. And they were more into the curve design, and they really liked those kind of design design because they feel they felt good with those uh, kind of designs. So yeah, it was really interesting the the results. All right. And uh, is InnoBrain also venturing into uh, space, like architectural uh, designs, or uh, how those impact our lives? Well, uh, in fact, uh, we started with all different industries, from from the car industry, architecture, cosmetics, even food industry, and all the different industries, just to test which one has uh, best possibility and. It's an opportunity for us. And we also had uh, some meetings with some owners, some architectural firm owners, and they were interested actually, but um, the industry is not that much, the demand is not that, not that much. So we couldn't just put our target on the architecture. So we had to turn it to an industry that has more demand on it, which right now is now is a uh, medical industry, but there were some interests also in architecture, uh, but we couldn't just fulfill that at that moment. Maybe when we get bigger, we can have some some other off offices, for example, an architectural section and then mm -hmm. another car, the car industry section or other sections. But at this moment, we are focusing on uh, medical uh, industry. All right. And uh, what are the plans for uh, InnoBrain in the coming few years? Well, the plan is that, uh, yes, we are actually working on our uh, product because what we want to offer at this moment, we are offering only a service. So we are doing the whole job. So we are mm. going to their uh, company. Uh, they bring, uh, bring us some, for example, 30 subject that's 30 person. So we do, we, we usually do those experiments on those persons. So we, we will give the product of that company to those, to those person and they work with that um, product and then we record everything and then we give them a result uh, as a report and a final, final report. But uh, we uh, uh, are working on a package to uh, sell everything to the companies. For example, we're working on a platform that hmm. you can uh, yourself, you can have, have uh, that package which has our platform as well, and also the devices that you can use for um, uh, capturing the brain signal. So you yourself can capture your subjects, subjects brain signal. Nice. Put those brain signal this, on this platform that we are we are working on it. On it, mm. you can put that those um, 
data on the platform and the platform platform will give you uh, the results just like some bar chart or linear charts charts and or different visualization uh, you know features and you can you can choose whatever you want wants and the way you want to see it you can uh, categorize them those uh, data you can see result of 10 percent one person or the whole result and all this stuff but we are really working hard on the platform so the future step for us is to releasing that package that whole package and selling that package to uh, our uh, customers sounds awesome so we don't really need those uh, technicalities required to uh, conduct the research right mm-hmm. yeah, yeah 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 exactly 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 and you can do the whole process by yourself. So, so yeah, and, and we will only help you through the process to teach you how to do it. And if uh, there would be any problem, we can fix it for you and all this stuff. Yeah. All right. And uh, you currently play the role of uh, business development and also R&D there, right? Uh, right now, actually, I am the design lead um, okay. in the... Yeah, in a brain. So uh, in my team, I have, for example, because at first, when you start a company as a startup, it's really important. I think that would uh, bring some value for your audience Yeah. to know that when you want to start something as an idea, as a startup, actually at first, um, everything, you have to do everything by yourself. So mm-hmm. at first, we were only two of us. I mean, me and my and my brother. Hmm. So I was doing everything related, everything, I mean, related to design, and he was doing everything related to the business stuff. So at every time that we wanted to have a have a pitch or we wanted to have a meeting and everything, I had to uh, just prepare everything related to the uh, graphical design or making PowerPoints, um, hmm. even, even the logo of the company is the logo that I designed the first. Oh, so nice. I designed about, I don't know, 20, 30 logo, and we changed it a lot, and this is the outcome, actually, this is the final one. Mm. So, so even the logo and then you know, the design, uh, all the designs that we had in our first website, actually. But this website, we are uh, using uh, some graphics. I'm, I'm leading a graphics that I have in my team. I'm giving the hints to the graphics to design it for me, and also I have someone else that uh, she is uh, really good with content making in a way, mm. a way of written content, written content like articles and stuff like that. So I'm managing this part, which is more about the branding, marketing, and uh, all this stuff uh, in the in a brand, a brand wow. company. Yes, and now we are actually. Uh, for co-founder, which we, uh, because at first we started by two, hmm. and then we started to find some other people in other in other uh, related industries like neuroscience. So we have a neuroscientist as well as nice. one of our co-founders. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, like a lot of architects should get into the startup space because uh, we build a sense of good design right from the get-go, right? When we join architecture school. So we know what we want to do when, even if we're starting on our own. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, um, Masi, what advice would you give to someone who is in architecture, but uh, wants to maybe start off on their own or wants to get into the startup space? They're in architecture and they want to go through the startup uh, world. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the advice, um, all of us has a lot of ideas. And mostly when you are in architecture, you might be more creative than other people. That's what I believe. Hmm. So you might, so you might have a lot of ideas, but but remember that when you want to uh, work on an idea that you have, uh, it's really important that you have the most adv- advantage of that idea. So when you come up with an idea, you have to be able to do the biggest part of it. For example, if I come up with an idea that it is about a space spaceships or whatever, I have no idea how to do that. I have no electronic, mechanical, or any and knowledge about the space or whatever, so so that's that's not going to be a good idea for me, for me, unless you have the capability to gather good people around you and manage them, because mm. that's also another 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 ability that you that you can fulfill all the other aspects, because you can manage other other people, bring them together, and help them to work them together. So you're going to be a good C- CEO. You know, you're going to be a good manager. You know what I mean? So that's the biggest advice. Uh, one of the biggest advice that I can give them. Mm. And also the other part is that really, really have have self-awareness. Really understand what it is, what is it that makes you happy. If you want to start something as a startup, the 
it means that you want to start a company in the future. Future, And it means that you want to live with that company for a long time. Mm. So you need to be passionate about the subject that you want to work with as a startup company. Yes. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of ups and downs as well, right? Yes, of course, of course. Good to mention. There are a lot of ups and downs. So we, when, when we... And we started the first, uh, at first, I mean, it was two years ago, uh, which we started the, mm. the first company. So it was really hard because at first you had a good idea, but uh, it's, uh, you need more, for example, you need funding to just work on it more. You need uh, to uh, put more people on your team. So you have to find them. You have to find some people that you can that you can put the trust on them so they can act uh, as best as they can. And so there are a lot of ups and downs, but it is really, really, uh, it's a really good process. It's, process. it's a really informative process for uh, everyone that wants to go through this path. And also people should be aware that if they have this uh, entrepreneurial, uh, uh, you know, um, some sort of entrepreneurial DNA in them, you know, it's because uh, sometimes people just like to make something, just like a company or stuff like that, but it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. It is nice from outside that, wow, this guy has a company and that was a startup company, whatever, but it's not easy at all. For, mm -hmm. so for example, for our first company, my brother was was much better than me in managing a lot of stuff so mm -hmm. he is the ceo now because we started together i could be ceo but it wasn't a good idea because i wasn't good in mm -hmm. that i wasn't good in managing managing like him so i went through a place that i could manage better and he went through a place that he could manage better because we had self-awareness so that's something that is really important for people to to have in mind and also the ups and downs which you which are a lot during the way yes of course and you guys, uh, yeah, as in like, uh, how challenging was it for you coming from Iran and then starting up shop in uh, Sweden and also networking in Sweden so that uh, you guys get the right people and get the move or company going? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, good question. Um, so my brother was out of the country and since he went through his his master degree, which is about, I don't know, maybe more than 10 years or 12 or 15 years ago. Okay. Um, at first he, he went to Germany because he was, he studied um, mechanical engineer, engineering. So he went to Germany hmm. uh, because he loved the car, in, car industry. And uh, so he went to Germany for the master degree and then went to Sweden for the PhD. Hmm. And um, uh, for me, um, I was in Iran when he was in Sweden and we started the uh, InnoBrain startup mm -hmm. company. So it is actu actually challenging uh, when you see the whole process. It is a long, long way to this point because he has been outside of country more than 15 or 12, year, mm -hmm. 12 years and he's been in that environment. So I, uh, but I was in this environment, but then I came to uh, Sweden. So it was a new culture, it was a new soci society and and uh, every, some some stuff are different, but the only thing that is um, common all over the world is networking. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are living, living networking is one of the most biggest advantage that you need to have. And it is not something that people have it in, as a DNA or something like their genes. No, it is something that you that you can gain as a skill, and you can learn more and more because. Uh, it might be really weird, but I was like these kind of uh, child, these kind of kids that uh, uh, their father should just, just, you know, push them to say hello to other people or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. I was really embarrassed all the time. I was really shy. So okay. even when I see, one. yeah, 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 yeah. When I see my, um, my history um, and the background that I have in my childhood, I was like, wow, I was really a calm a child. I was always playing for myself and all I had some friends, not a lot, but uh, then uh, it became it became uh, different, much much more different mm -hmm. than than it was in the past because I had a friend, and uh, that friend he was really uh, you know it was exactly on the opposite side of me, and okay. I was always embarrassed mm -hmm. when I was with him because he always always wanted to talk with everyone, make networking just naturally, you know mm -hmm. he was like that. And I wasn't. And then I learned actually, then I learned that no, it can be good because he's doing everything while he, 
Well, he doesn't have that kind of knowledge, hmm. that much of knowledge, but he has networking. So you don't need to have know everything by yourself. You need to make network and ask other people. So it can be a can be a really helpful process for people who wants to do everything. I really mean it. Even if you want to find a job and it is not easy nowadays, you know that there are some problems, uh, the demands demands are might, might be lower, for example, in architecture firms um, uh, and it might be hard, but even if you want to find work, networking is a good thing. Hmm. You have to just go and, go and talk. I uh, Well, if you like, we can talk also about that because when I came here, I had some also uh, financial problems because yeah, it's sure. not easy to come from a country like Iran because yeah. I think I don't know about India but then the change rate of the money a currency between yeah. Iran and uh, the uh, Krona, S- Swedish Krona. yeah it's very very high and I had to pay some uh, I mean a lot of money for the living and a part of my study so it was it was really hard and I made uh, some solutions for that mm-hmm. and it's really interesting if you were in, if you were interested we can also talk about that yeah, yeah. sure. So, uh, for example, uh, when I came here, it was really hard because everything was really expensive because I was changing in my mind to my own currency, which was uh, Tuman in Iran. Yeah, okay. And it was really, so everything which I wanted to buy, even the simplest, simplest food or fruit or everything, it was really pricey. But the fact is that I was really trying to make a pattern of the solutions. So mm. I had to... Uh, well, walk around all around the city, ask different people, my classmates, some friend, Iranian friends, mm-hmm. and just search about the cheapest, the cheapest, the pe- per, uh, cheapest places in um, Lund. And then I could find a pattern for myself that if I buy these stuff there, that will be cheaper. And that stuff, another place that will be yeah. cheaper, you know? So I did that, for example. And even when I wanted to go to barber, you know, for mm-hmm. a haircut, mm-hmm. I have to pay the money that is 10, 10 times more than the money that I was paying in my country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the price that I'm talking, yes, and the price that I'm talking is a student price here, okay. which is still 10 times more. Okay. And it's, it really, it's really weird and that you, are, you, you might say that I don't want, so let it grow, let my hair grow <laughs> as much as they want. I don't want to <laughs> okay. cut them, you know what I mean? But so after two times that I went there and I, and I paid the money, I was like, okay, I don't want to pay. So what can I do? I always ask myself a question like this. So mm-hmm. then I came up with the idea that, so let's offer this barber guy uh, something instead of having a haircut, having a free haircut. So mm-hmm. I just get myself together and I, get, I, I just was really trying to be brave. Mm-hmm. So I went in, I told the guy that I can do something for you. What is it? What is it that I can do for you instead of having, having a free haircut? Mm-hmm. You, know, okay. you know, people might think that it is really embarrassing, but it is not actually. It is the way that you can start a company actually. It is the way that you can do the networking. So mm-hmm. the guy guy was skeptical and I offered her a free, uh, a free video because he was interested into these Instagram videos or Facebook videos, one right. minute videos right. that people make out of themselves, so they work. Hmm. So I knew, I knew how to do that also. A little bit. So nice. I offered him a free video. I uh, yes, I um, I actually filmed one of uh, his customer while he was doing the haircut. Awesome. Cut, and mm. then made a video. And after a week, I gave that to uh, the barber guy, and he was really, uh, you know, he was really fascinated by that. He was like, "Wow, mm. this is this is really good." So let's. And let's you do got a, a deal. free haircut. And we made a deal. <laughs> and yes, I, I got free haircuts, and every time I just record film with my cell phone and and there I and then I found uh, an application that you can edit uh, your film inside your phone so I I'm doing everything by my phone and I'm putting some mm. effects and uh, music on the, that movie and and then give it to send it to the guy and he's doing a free haircut and actually after t- yeah yeah and it, it can it can be really I think it can be inspiring for people that mm. think that uh, they have uh, uh, they have financial problem. So how can I start a startup company when I cannot even I cannot even buy something, you know, what for myself? Or I, I can't afford anything. Yeah. And you know what is it? What is interesting? Well, this, and the interesting part is that after that, I thought that so when I'm doing this uh, and uh, for him and he's giving me a free haircut, why not I give him more 
and I charge him for that. <laughs> and then I told the guy that, <laughs> what do you think that I give you more than one movie? And so, mm. for example, for example, three or four posters, like taking pictures of you and make posters, beautiful posters, and also two more movies to do. And you give me, for example, 300 kron hmm. krona with one free haircut. And he accepted that. Nice. So the last month I did this and I'm about to go there and uh, take my money and also a free haircut. So, so you see, it, it is all one process, but it starts, it starts with one networking, you know, you have to ask. People are afraid, afraid to ask, and that is a really a poison for your idea if you want mm. to start mm. something, or if you want to even find a job and you are afraid to ask people that if they want you or not, or go there to the offices, give their, them your portfolios and CVs. That's exactly uh, something that I did because of, I was really afraid, and I didn't. And I didn't have a good job back then in Iran. So I was working mm. freelance and freelancing, you know, it's really hard when you work yeah. freelance, you have to find projects yourself and it's really making networking. So one day I was passing by, passing by of one of the uh, very famous, one of the famous, uh, not bad, uh, architectural offices in my country, in my home city, hometown. Mm. Mm. So I was just walking by and I thought, I thought that why not, I, why not? I go there, ring the bell, say hi and just, go there and talk to them. Mm -hmm. And I just did it. It was really hard for me. Oh, I awesome. went there, I rang, rang, yeah, I rang the bill. And there was a woman, she said, so hello, what do you want? And I said, I just want to talk with the, I mean, the owner was one of the architects. I want to talk with Mr. Something. Mm. And then she said, okay, come in. And that was really weird that they let me in. <laughs> I, had, I didn't have any appointment or whatever. Okay. So I went there, the owner was there. We sat there, we talked and and he said, you can send your, yes, we are really interested if you, you've you been in this, you've been a study, you, you have studied in this university, that university, you have been in this kind of project, that kind of project. It's before, this is before uh, I come out, I mean, for Sweden, in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Because when I finished my master, my first master, I came back to my hometown mm -hmm. and I was looking for a job and I did this and it was wrong. Also interesting, I couldn't get the job because after that uh, they were really busy to see even my portfolio and they didn't see that and they mm. didn't contact me even after several uh, try that I did. But, but still the experience the, the, was... The whole, the, the whole fact is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, what I want to say is the fact is that you have to ask you have to ask and do not think that that can, that can be embarrassing because people think if they hear no, they hear a negative thoughts hmm. of other people about themselves, they get embarrassed, mm -hmm. which is not right, you know, because we are putting too much attention to other, other people's opinion about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when you, want, when you are about to be 90 year old and you're dying, you're going to regret that why you did you didn't ask that guy about that job why you didn't ask that girl about uh, i don't know about your future that you want to you want to have someone in your life or whatever you know what i mean yeah awesome awesome masi i think that is very yep. very yeah. inspiring yeah a lot of fire in you yeah thank you thank you thank you very much i hope i hope uh, you uh, your audience really, really uh, hear the gist of what I'm saying, you know, which is just to be be you and try to to uh, do whatever you like. Hmm. And along the way, just ask other people. If you don't know anything, don't think that it is a cool thing not to show show your uh, your, your your weakness. Yeah. So when you have a weakness, you have to use it. For example, for me, I have a big weakness. When I go somewhere, which is which is in meeting, for example, one of the most important thing is to remember people's name in that meeting when you mm. meet them for first for the first time. I know that it is important, but I cannot do that. That's mm. my weakness. And I have read a lot of books, and all of them were saying, "So do this, do that, repeat it with yourself, and all this stuff." And I wasn't like I couldn't do that. Mm. So I'm taking that weakness as as like as an advantage or as a fun thing for myself. And I express that whenever okay. I go somewhere, I don't remember their name. And, they, and then I say, oh, sorry, that's, that's what happens. 
happens always to me. I don't remember people's names, but no offense. And then I make a joke about it and then I keep going and no one feel embarrassed and, and I mm-hmm. don't feel embarrassed about it. And that is my weakness, but I'm taking it and making it like an opportunity. And uh, yeah. on a lighter note, uh, you said the importance of asking, right? So do you even go out and uh, ask girls for dates? Uh, so as long as I have, uh, I, I'm married. Okay. I'm married. <laughs> So I don't do that, <laughs> okay. but uh, but I remember that I was really shy back then. Uh, but while I was really social when I was in my bachelor, hmm. everyone, one mostly everyone, ninety nine percent of people, they really liked me because I was a social guy. Hmm. I was just because I always wanted to help people. I had this in me that I was all was always trying to talk to people to help them or do something for them. That was why they, they really liked me. So it was really hard to um, reach to someone that you really love because it ha- it happens for you. When you are studying, you really love someone, uh, one of your classmates, and I, that, that was the same for me. I loved mm-hmm. some of them, and uh, one and was that I really wanted to approach. I couldn't because I was in a, I was in a position that I wasn't still – like this that I am right now mm-hmm. because it's well, back then it was eight years ago and I was like mm, still a little bit shy inside mm-hmm. of me so I couldn't mm-hmm. express my feel the feeling to them and uh, but hopefully I could find a good uh, the good the best one uh, actually not my classmate but uh, now I'm married and I'm really happy with that but I'm using that that skill to asking people without fear to telling what you feel and how you feel even right now when I feel about, it doesn't matter if it's a girl or it's a boy, when I feel <laughs> that, for example, they're good looking or they're pretty or they're really talented in something, I tell them, mm. I tell them, I really, I go there and, oh, that's a nice, that, that's a nice bag you have. Mm. It's really, I, I really, I'm really interested in that. So yeah, good luck with that, something like that. So people have, with, with, that, with that thing that you're doing, mm. people will have good, um, will, will get a good impact from you. And it is really helpful because I can see that. That is also another skill for networking mm-hmm. because I've seen that I, I made a good uh, opinion for someone. Mm. And another day I saw that exact person and I was doing something and he or she came to help me because they had a good uh, idea, they had a good the impact from me. Mm-hmm. So whatever you're doing in your life, do not think that, is it something that, that can be back to me, do mm. not expect things to be back to you. Mm. Just do, do good things, do good the right thing, and it will coming back to you someday or one day or in, I don't know, it, it will, it will, you know? All right, awesome, Masi. I think that was some really awesome advice. I think our listeners will definitely benefit from all that, uh, what you said. Uh, before I let you go, we'll just quickly jump to the quick, quick fire round and we'll wrap it up. Okay. All right. Uh, which book has inspired you the most? A good question. I um, read only, I think, five books, four okay. or five books in my <laughs> whole life. Uh, okay. I mean, the, the books, not the, the, the educational book that you have to just hmm. read for the exam, no, but the other book, four or five, mostly about the personality, how to make a personality, how to make this, how to make a good talk or whatever, which they were all the same. And at the, at a the point they were really boring. <laughs> okay. So after that, uh, because they were just giving you more structure, you have to mm. do this to do that. You have mm. to do this to happen this, mm. that, that. And I was really frustrated by that. So I changed my uh, taste to other book, which was success, some sort of success stories book. For example, mm. I, um, and also I changed the way of uh, reading books. So I don't mm. like read them. I love to listen to them. So that's why I listen to a lot of audio books mm. and the podcast a lot, a lot. Mm. And I'm learning a lot. Um, so I changed my taste from finding books that can give you the structure, how to be what you have to be, to the books that is about the people's or the success stories or the life is life, mm. life story of successful people. For example, I listened to two books about Charlie Chaplin and I was really fascinated by the Charlie Chaplin that he was an uneducated uh, guy mm. and he made this huge impact on the world, even this far right now. Yeah, yeah. And it was fascinating and he was uneducated and it's really interesting. And also some other people, Muhammad Ali Clay, I, I've seen um, some documentary, I've heard some, some, some things about him, a lot of things about him. And uh, for example, let's say, what else, what else? Steve Jobs? There's another person, uh, 
Steve Jobs, yes, I've seen the movie and also some documentary, and I was also fascinated by by the guy. But but it's I, we don't have time to talk talk about them. But each one of them has some sort of fascinating features, mm. while they have some weaknesses that were sometimes even hurting other people around them. Mm, so yeah, exactly. we don't have time for that. But people can can uh, go and listen and watch those uh, movies or listen to their books because they are they exist. And also one person that I really admire. Among all of this, and he is alive still. He's a contemporary, and he is Gary Gary Vaynerchuk, which oh, yeah, he okay. calls himself. <laughs> he call himself Gary V mm. as as um, his brand, and he is he is still he's again another uneducated. He has all some 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 really uh, you know some school a school or five year or I don't know six. Yeah, Sierra school in the childhood, and after that, won't go to college. And mm. fascinating life story into business in the business. People can follow this guy and learn a lot because I learned a lot, and I'm still learning. So yeah, these are the guys that I have done. Yeah, I can definitely so, yeah. see a lot of Gary V influence on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I think you know him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he keeps uh, cursing all the time, right? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, cursing, yes, that's something that uh, it's really interesting that uh, once someone asked him, why are you cursing so much? Mm. And then he said, uh, that's the way I am. I know myself. That's the way it comes out, mm -hmm. out of my mouth and my brain. Mm. And I cannot do anything about it. I just want to say something in a way that I want to say. it." And it's really interesting that it uh, gave me the idea that... Uh, I don't need to be like anyone else or like him or any other mm. these success stories or successful people because people try to mimic exactly like them. I can get, get inspired to know who I am, how I want to talk and talk like that or think like that, like exactly the way that I want. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Be true to yourself and be honest. Yes, of course. All right. Uh, what's been your favorite movies uh, that you watched? Movies. So, because I'm I'm a really big fan of watching movies, and uh, that is the fact that I have this English, uh, you know, skill. Because I've been watching movies mm, mm, from my childhood when I was ten, hmm. and it was there wasn't a lot of there was these VHS movies, so you okay. had to rent it from the shop and all this. But after a while, uh, which is about the past. 10 years i was watching a lot of different best movies mm. and right now i only go to this imdb website top 250 uh, and yes top <laughs> 250 and i uh, and i start i started from the best one which is the one of the best ones so father it's really inspiring it's really yeah it's really yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i'm just coming down and watching all of them and I'm a really big fan, so i really cannot tell you what kind mm. of movie but I just can um, suggest to your audience that do not put time to watch, uh, you know, unuseful and, uh, you know, some unuseful movies <laughs> because everything, yeah. everything you see and you read and you do in your lifetime is something that is storing into your back of to your brain, you know, mm -hmm. and you're using them un unintentionally one at one point of your life and you don't not you do not you are not aware of that even so try to see good movies try to see the movie see the movies that there are good things about them there are good articles and good opinions about them uh, for example that that is why i'm working on the imdb and just see what is on imdb website to see and i'll, I'll I'll also see the a little bit. I read a little bit about the movies, and then I see mm, them. Because okay. that uh, ten years ago I was like just seeing everything because I was in, really interested into movies. So I was, mm. and then I under, I understand that uh, that no, some of them are really sorry, but saying that, but it's re really rubbish. You know, mm. so they, they are really the, the the point is it's really meaningless to mm. see, and and then. I feel bad about myself that I put time, I put a time on watching those movies. And now I can tell you the fact that I have good ideas about sometimes making some videos or movies or clips or even do something for myself in my, for my own job is that I was watching a lot of good movies and I was listening to a lot of good uh, books or podcasts. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. They're helping me now in my career and also life. Yeah, and uh, personally, I'm a big fan of Iranian movies. Like, you guys make some really good movies. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have, of, of course, we have a lot of bad movies. And of course, there are a lot of, um, uh, we have a lot of directors and they are really doing good. And, and I'm really, uh, I really admire them. And I see their movies. Uh, uh, it's, they, it's really meaningful and useful to watch some of them. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. All right. Uh, which city would you consider your favorite? Uh, in the whole world, you mean? Yeah. Well, which city? That's a really tricky question because me, I have a lot wide variety of tastes so mm. i love to see everywhere actually mm. and i just cannot tell you which one because each city has its own spirit mm. for example my hometown has its own spirit which i love it the capital of our country it's really polluted it's really crowded but it is still it has some good features that, that i love about it so let's say i love the spirit of each city because <laughs> really? I, you know i really enjoy it. Yeah. Right. Awesome. And uh, what does a daily routine in your life look like? Daily routine. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So daily routine. I work uh, almost every day, um, uh, except uh, the Saturday and a little bit of Sunday, but almost every day uh, from eight or nine mm-hmm. until eight in the at the night. So wow. it's, it's almost at least ten to twelve hour a day, mm-hmm. but different things. Okay, I'm working on a lot of different stuff, um, working the, the inner brain is something, uh, and uh, my new startup company mm-hmm. that I'm working at, my new startup idea, it's not a company yet, it's something else, then you have your own life, and um, you know what, I just do things, uh, and I don't really think about how to do them. I think mm-hmm. a little bit, but I try to do it before I convince myself in my brain brain that I cannot do it, hmm. do it. You know what I mean? Hmm. So, because there was a time that I was thinking a lot about whatever I want to do and I had a book full of my schedule and I mean, I mean, the things that I want to do and I couldn't mm-hmm. do them and it makes me, it would, it, it was always making me depressed. Yeah. And then I tried to, uh, do them, uh, um, at any cost. So I have something that I have to do, so I will do it, whether I can do 10% of it or the 50% of it, because it's better to do things uh, little by little, unless, uh, instead of just doing one thing, mm-hmm. I, don't, I mean, one, just putting two days, three days doing one thing and then go to another thing, you know? Uh, because uh, imagine, imagine that you have a task to do and you have one day. You will use the whole day to do that one task. Hmm. And imagine you have three tasks and you have one day. You will do three tasks in one day. So it means that you can do it. Hmm. But you have to put yourself in a position that uh, you have uh, some more tasks in a day. So if you cannot do one of them, for example, you have 10 tasks, so you cannot do one of them. There's no shame for that. Hmm. For that. And I don't punish my, myself when I cannot do one of them. You know, that's really important because when people get uh, get up get up, for example, late in the morning, yeah. they punish themselves. <laughs> yeah. But I don't. When I get up late, I don't punish myself because uh, I had a long night, I had a really heavy work the, yesterday, for example. So today I got up got up a little bit late, one mm. hour, two hours, so what? Mm. Then I start my day from 10 or whatever. Mm. Because people get depressed and that day would be uh, totally unuseful for them yeah. and they try to get up early the other day to do that you know so use whatever you have do not think too much about do not punish yourself when you do something wrong you're you're learning from it you're just learning and the next day you know what you do so do not punish yourself for that brilliant there's a lot of good advice uh Masi. and my last question to you would be uh where do you see yourself in 10 years from now 10 years interesting uh, what I had in my mind as my vision, I don't really care about the ideas that I'm working on really. I do care about them, but I don't put them on a, on the pedestal that they, they, they are about to uh, make money for me. I don't hmm. think about them hmm. like that, uh, that they are about to become a really big or big company or big or whatever. The only thing that I have in my mind as my vision is to be in a place, if it's about to be be 10 years, so let it be, or 20 years, doesn't matter. I want to reach to a level that I can have much bigger impact on people around me. Mm -hmm. I don't say that I want to 
put a big impact on the whole world. Mm. I would if would if I can, I would do that. Mm. But I just want to be in a place that I can help people to make their life better. Mm. And it doesn't matter what we're doing as our startup companies or whatever, because at the end of the day, which I'm just referring to at the end of the age, you know, at the end of the, your mm. life, for example, you're 90, 90 years old. Mm. At that moment, nothing, nothing matters for you actually. Not that amount of money that you made can help you or any other network or whatever. The only thing that can help you to make you feel good when you're going to the other, to the other world or whatever, or dying, is that you could have some good impact on people around you, even mm. a small, even few. So that, so that is my 10 years from now, and I hope I reach there. Awesome. Yeah, hopefully we'll have you in the future and uh, we can discuss about what you've achieved and what uh, you're doing then uh, as well. I would, be, I would be happy. I would be delighted, yeah. All right. And what's the best way our listeners could get in touch with you? Oh, the people, you mean? Yeah. They want to reach out to me, you mean? Yeah. Well, uh, because I am in, in everywhere in the social media, I'm okay. just establishing myself everywhere. So I have contacts that I have people, I had people contacted me through, through uh, Instagram. They have seen some of my, for example, educational work, then they contacted me there. And then I gave them, for example, my number or my email so we could chat or chat or we could call, or to, we could make a call. Mm. Uh, I had people from Instagram, Facebook, they reached out to me. And LinkedIn a lot, just like you, that you, you reached mm. out to yeah. LinkedIn and some other people other people as well, and uh, also um, by email sometimes, but social media is, always works much better because I always check them, more, most of them. And so, yeah, that's the best thing because they can search my name everywhere in LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, Twitter, everywhere, and they can reach out to me and I always, I always, an always answer people, I always, even if I cannot do what they want, I just say that I'm sorry, I cannot do that. I don't, I, or I don't have to worry, I, or I'm not interested, or whatever. Yeah. All right. Also, Masi, I think uh, we had a blast having you on, and there was a lot of useful information that you shared. Uh, I hope to have you in the future as well and discuss uh, more about what you're doing and uh, how you're impacting uh, yeah. people around you. Thanks again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm really, really interested to talk to you to uh, uh, your podcast uh, maybe five years or 10 years from now because yeah. I would be really happy to prove you that I have done what I have said 10 years ago and and that's the result and I would be happy to do that and I would be delighted and thank you really thank you for having me in your podcast awesome thanks Masi wow what an episode I personally had a lot of fun interviewing Masi and also coming out inspired from what Masi had to share. If you did like this episode, please do share it with your friends and family. And coming to the most exciting news is that I have officially launched my new course, which is the complete SketchUp and VDA course for interior design. If you want access to the course, you can head to arkyan.com slash courses. We are currently running a special discount, which is almost around 90% off. It's going to help you learn SketchUp and VDA in the most practical way where we're going to learn how to model a bedroom right from scratch, learn the various tools and also some crazy SketchUp plugins like Clothworks, where you can learn how to model pillows, bed sheets, blankets. It's a lot of good stuff. We've had over 6,000 students, over 200 plus positive five-star reviews. It's an absolute treat. And we're also going to release few new courses in the coming few months on SketchUp and V-Ray. And it's all going to be available on the website which is arkeon.com slash courses. And if you want more details on our courses, on our episodes and whatever Arkeon is doing, do subscribe to our newsletter where we share everything in a consolidated format. It will definitely give you an idea of what Arkeon is up to. So that was a quick update. I hope you liked this episode and whatever Arkeon is doing. We will be releasing episodes on a weekly basis and hopefully like the Joe Rogan podcast, or like the John Lee Dumas podcast where those guys release episodes on a daily basis. That's our goal. We will get there one step at a time. I'll see you guys in the next episode. This is your host Manish 
Paul Simon. I'm going to cut short my name to Manish Simon because my name is pretty long. So this is your host, Manish Simon, signing off. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Ah Young Podcast. We're still building the community. Please share this knowledge with someone you know who could benefit. Just send them to archeon.com where you'll find our free newsletter and for more podcast episodes. Search for the show on any major podcasting platform. Don't forget to subscribe where you're listening right now. And if you liked it, leave a rating or review.